McGinn and Ben and I'm touching the tattoo on her left arm. I think I'm too tired. And then I'm not. So much for my good boundaries and emotional health. She's straight, but so cute. I think we're on a date. It soon becomes clear that we're not and that last night was just a fluke. I become lost in her train of thought. I feel tender about the way she pronounces her words, the way she laughs, the way she seems so far away from me. She doesn't ask me questions beyond certain conventional inquiries. And then she's not particularly intent on listening to my answers. She tells me now that she's actually celibate. Ignoring this obvious rejection of my advances, I maintain some hope. And buzzed on raging hormones, I make more meaningful eye contact. Slowly approaching her for a kiss. I wish she would open her mouth. She gives me only a soft kiss, which I return in a gesture of earnest desire. With my heart pounding, smiling sadly at her disinterest, I lower my eyes in defeat and feel the heroic acceptance of this new fact of life. She is not interested in me. Friday night and I'm lonely. In the grand scheme of things, being alone seems slightly preferable to being around people. It make me feel even more self-loathing, insecurity, and dysphoria. I catch a few bars of some Barry Manilow codependent love song at the corner store and tap into this well of sadness about not getting what I want from her. That melancholy ache is so familiar from childhood. Always having crushes on girls and not being able to do anything about it. I used to read Heinrich Boll novels just for the parts where he wrote about clothing and food. A wool sweater. Cutting a sausage with a knife. Drinking coffee with cream. I'm sitting here eating Swiss cheese and strawberries in the dark and trying to stop thinking about her. 